Hello, beautiful, brilliant black women. God is born. I hope you're all well. This is part two of how dare anyone denigrate the lives of black women and black girls. In the previous video, we spoke a bit about um, that, that beautiful soul, that incredible black woman who could have been my own daughter, Sonia Massey. So we're going to tie this up. I'm going to finish a little read for you, and then we're going to get into some of the points in this Black Woman's Guide to Thriving Beyond uh, Racism and Massage and War in this country. Again, this is for educational purposes, trigger warning for Black women, um, because we take on so much. I want to make sure that you are being selfful and checking in with yourself um, and doing self-care and being compassionate, kind, and patient, and loving to you. All right, let's 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 finish up where, ooh, can't even see. Girl, I can't. Um, let's finish up where we lo- left off um, in reading Elsa Barkley's explanation of what, what went on with um, Mary Turner, another young woman, um, in the in um, 1918 who was um, unallied by the same violent my mobsters um, that did what they did to this this sweet woman um, why is it that noosing and the notion of it as a masculine experience is not remembered but is in fact central to how we understand the history of African American males and indeed the African American experience in general because let me segue we When we're talking about our enslavement here, when we are talking about um, what we endured during um, Reconstruction and Jim Crow and the Civil Rights era, we are only talking about the pain of and the, um, the horrors and terrorism of only Black men. When in fact, black women endured so much more, but that's not spoken of. We're speaking of it today, right? So she goes on to say that, um, but violence against women, noosing, grape, and other forms of violence is not depicted as, um, just as much the forefront. The questions that Turner's story raises are not just about women as victims, black women as victims. Her story and reactions to it show uh, black women playing multiple roles as victims, as loved ones left behind, as though who as those who fought back using grassroots institutions institutional and artistic forms of resistance and outright resistance as black women and black girls we were on the front lines of everything um and uh, each role reveals new complications however narrative disruptions have uh rewards and consequences hmm? Conventional wisdom on new scenes posits that turn of the century black women had greater leeway for speaking out. Surely what happened to Turner shows otherwise. 
as do the creative responses where textual and archival evidence document black women struggling with what they could and could not say. So what was it that that beautiful, wonderful Sonia said to this this heinous ass mass murder people leader who executed her? I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. His next words was to tell her in the most vile way what he was going to do. And then he fucking did it. And what I see is outrage because we, we get outraged after the fact. And what I need to see is prevention. What I need to see is us coming up with offenses. Yes, we need to defend ourselves when, when these heinous acts happen to us. And that's very important too. Because I need people to get just like the way I see my daughter. You fuck with my daughter and all bets are fucking off. I'm going for, this ain't just a legend. I'm going for everybody, everybody that spawns your bitch at. Okay, so if what the people who terrorize us, if their primary language is violence, whether it's um, Negro peons from Blackistan and jabronis, whether it's um, black women who are black male worshipers or male worshipers at all, whether it's uh, and they're anti-black woman or whether it is uh white women, what you call them, Karens, um, bitches, whatever you call them, Legion, um, whether it is a heinous white ass male, I don't give a damn what your demographic is. You do not get to continue to come up with this propaganda and rhetoric that is getting us motherfucking killed. You are making it so that we're just fucking open season and then telling us shit like, oh, well, you're being too masculine. You're not feminine enough. Oh, really? Fuck you. Fuck you. I'll do whatever it takes when it comes to holding black women sacred, protected, and uplifted. I don't give a fuck what any of you other demographics think feel none of it okay so um she goes on to discuss that surely what happened to turner shows otherwise right that we don't get to um talk about how we feel oh you're too angry you're too this fuck you and your stereotypes I don't fit into your little patriarchy or your idea of what I am. You don't get to tell me how you're going to treat me, motherfuckers. I'm going to tell you who I am, what I need, want, and desire, and my expectations. You've been the motherfucking me, especially after everything black women have and continue to do for all of you globally, not just the United States. Not just the UK where they're trying to talk about chasing out uh, black people or whatever. I want my country back. Where the fuck did your country go? That wasn't yours in the first fucking place. It didn't go anywhere. But what we're what we are going to do is we are going to make sure that you understand it is a very risky proposition for you to be terrorizing, attacking, and coming at and for black women and black girls, indigenous women, indigenous girls. There will be consequences to your badass behaviors. So black women, please take the time to look at the at these um, at these few standards that I put together. Please add to them, individualize them, do what we need to do. I just need to know that you are safe 
and you are protected and you are getting out there and defending yourself.